Franco Cavalli, thank you very much. Pleasure. N not just for talking to eCancer about this nice trial that you've been running, but for 40 years of lymphoma and leukemia research, which you've been at the front of uh, as long as I can remember. Um, when you and I started looking after lymphoma patients 40 years ago, there was just CHOP. And not a lot changed until we got rituximab CHOP. But now we're seeing another field change, we hope. Um, first of all, tell me about mantle cell lymphoma, because not a lot of people see a lot of patients. <coughs> well, mantle cell lymphoma is a rather rare subtype of mm. lymphoma. Um, I go past about 6% of all non Hodgkin lymphomas still considered to be incurable. Uh, we have made some progress in uh, the last uh, years, mainly by treating patients uh, with more aggressive uh, mm. treatment compared to CHOP and by adding in responding patients high-dose chemotherapy with autologous bone marrow transplantation. But the progress has not been Great. Uh, mantle cell lymphoma is still considered the worst subtype of aggressive uh, lymphomas and uh, the median uh, sur survival uh, for at least 90% uh, of patients who have an aggressive form. There are 10% with an indolent form, but the 90% of the patients who have the aggressive form, the mean survival time is still somewhere between three and four years. And uh, we've been looking at new drugs, you've been looking at new drugs all your career, uh, and bortezomib came along and seemed to show activity in failed patients with mantle cell lymphoma, is, is that right? Yes. Are these transplant patients or people who didn't get transplants? Both. 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 Transplant okay. patients and patients who didn't get transplanted. I mean, there are three or four interesting new drugs for yeah. patients relapsing. Uh, the first one was uh, bortezomib, uh, then lenalidomide yeah. uh, came along, and now ibrutinib is the last one, uh, which has produced interesting response rate in uh, relapsing patients. But bortezomib has been the first yeah. real, really a new drug uh, which had a consistent and important percentage of response in relapsing yeah. patients. So it was normal to try to incorporate bortezomib in the first line treatment. Sure. And so you put it into uh, new, newly diagnosed patients not fit for transplant. And the uh, standard treatment, of course, was CHOP, rituximab. And then uh, how, what was the thinking behind VCAP? Well, Velcate is, is a drug which is somewhat similar to Vincristin. Uh, okay. It has also a similar uh, toxicity profile okay. with n neuropathy like uh, Vincristin. So it was, um, it was logic to try to substitute Vincristin with uh, bortezomib in the R-CHOP um, uh, combination chemotherapy. And uh, the trial was performed um, mainly uh, in, in China, in Russia, in the eastern part of the EU, uh, but about 25% um, of the patients were treated uh, in we Western Europe. So a total of almost 500 patients were randomized between the classical R-CHOP and the new treatment where instead of vincristin, uh, bortezomib was used 1.3 milligram per square meter, day mm -hmm. 1, 4, 8, and uh, 11. Um, the interesting point in that study is that since um, the, the limit for, uh, for bone marrow transplantation was set, set at 60 years, and in some of the centers participating through the study, there was not the possibility to transplant patients. The population sure. which has been treated is rather similar to the normal population sure. of patients with mantle cell lymphoma. That's very informative. Yes, it's very informative. Sure. If you see uh, the mean median age is, is 66 years, yeah. which is exactly the median age in, in most in the of the series. Uh, there is a relation 3 to 1 for male, 3 mm. male and 1 women, which is Again, uh, what we see in the in the lymphoma uh, database, and also the um, 
percentages for stage two, stage three, stage four, yeah. uh, IPI subgroups and so on are exactly That's the same. So it's, it's, it's a very informative trial. And it's a big trial. I mean, I can't remember ever seeing a mantle cell trial with that number of patients in it. It, it's really it is, it is the biggest an impressive effort. Yeah, it's an impressive effort. It's the biggest trial which has been carried out up to now in uh, non-previously treated yeah. patients yeah. with mantle cell yeah. lymphoma. And there's an interesting outcome too, otherwise we wouldn't talk about it. Yes, uh, the outcome is, is interesting because, uh, I mean, there is a, a, a clear cut and highly significant difference in the progression-free survival yeah. um, in favor of the new uh, combination uh, treatment, including uh, RELCATE. Um, Th the um, median progression free survival in the R chop is in the order of 17 months. In the Velcate arm is uh, almost 25 months, which is an improvement of almost 60%. And this is by uh, the data provided by the Independent Review sure. Committee. Sure. Based on the investigator, is even bigger. Uh, the median there is, is 30 months. And if we consider only the patients who are younger than 60, and who did not have a uh, medical reason for not being uh, mm -hmm. transplantable, uh, the median in the Velcate arm is, Velcate arm is uh, 44 months, wow. which is almost exactly the same as uh, the best results which were recently published by the Eastern Cooperative Group with an older Velcate encompassing regimen, but which was more intense and more okay. aggressive than this one. That's a very impressive result. And the downside, toxicity comparisons, what about the neurotoxicity issue, vincristine versus uh, bortezomib, head well, on? Um, I mean, the Velcat arm had somewhat more uh, general toxicity, yep. uh, but not neuropathy. The neuropathy is exactly okay. the same percentage-wise. The interesting point, which is a bit striking is that uh, the uh, neuropathic symptoms seem to resolve quicker and in a higher percentage in the Velcate arm, uh, arm as compared to the uh, classical R chop. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there is more myelosuppression, there are many more neurotropenia, more th thrombocytopenia in the Velcate arm, arm, but there is no increase of bleeding. Uh, there is a little bit more of infectious uh, complications, but looking at the number of patients who had to discontinue the treatment because of toxicity and at the uh, drug-related death, they are exactly the same in the two sure. arms. And that's uh, with 75% of the patients over 60? Yes. In a group yes. who you would yes. expect maybe yes. would, have, would, sure. have, would, have done, yeah. would have done worse. And um, I think there were two deaths in one arm and three, ar three deaths yes. in the other yeah. arm. Uh, so that's uh, that's a fair result, uh, I, I think. So uh, have you uh, have you seen anything like this before in mantle cell lymphoma? No, I think this. Uh, I mean, the data are still not mature enough as regards overall survival. survival. Sure. Uh, there is um, at four years there is a ten percent advantage of the velcat arm as compared to the other arm, um, but it is too early because only about thirty percent of the events. Uh, yeah. as regards survival have occurred. Sure. But the two curves are going, are separating. So I, my impression is that possibly when the data will be more mature, there will be most probably a difference also in overall survival, which would be new yeah. in mental yeah. cell lymphoma. Absolutely. 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 Uh, how are you going to handle the fact that you've got possible active drugs for those who, who fail? Well, um, Are you going to, have you got a policy ready for people who fail on either arm uh, to, get well a, to get a new active drug, or one of the linalid mines or one of the other? No, there was no, uh, no policy, but uh, looking at, at uh, the subsequent treatment, there is no great difference yep. uh, um, in, in the treatments which uh, the patients received in, in both arms. And I mean, the accrual stopped in uh, 2011, and some of the newer drugs like ibutinib, they were as yet not available. Sure, sure. Um, is this a paradigm shift? I think that uh, one could say that most probably, well, we have still to await a little longer, but most probably the uh, new uh, air cap uh, regimen is going to be considered the standard treatment, sure. at least in the 
patients who are not eligible for a more intense treatment and for transplantation. Sure. sure. Congratulations to you and to your international group. Thank stretching you. Stretching right across half of the world. Uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you.